फेल हो गया मूवीज इन एल सेवन ऑन सैटरडे एंड संडे नाइट वॉज अ मेजर अट्रैक्शन द मोस्ट कॉमन फ्रेज यूज ड्यूरिंग मूवी टाइम वॉज ऑडियो एंड फोकस क्रिकेट एंड चित्रहार वो मेजर अट्रैक्शन दैट वुड कीप टी वी रूम ऑक्यूपाइड यंग सचिन बैटिंग वुड ब्रिंग चेयर्स इन द रूम वेर एज इज विकेट ड्राउंड वुड ब्रिंग आर्स ऑफ मॉर्निंग एंड ड्रिंकिंग तिवारी पान का चालू खाता ऑलमोस्ट सबका था और सुंदरलाल पुतनलाल का पता ऑलमोस्ट सबको रहता था सुंदरलाल पुतनलाल बोले तो धोबी हु वुड ब्रिंग ओवर नाइट सर्विस एम एन एम व फेमस पर्सनैलिटीज ऑफ द बैच बोथ ऑफ देम नोन फॉर वेरीड रीजन एम बोले तो पहला एम बोले तो मामू चाय और दूसरा एम बोले तो प्रोफेसर एम एम ओवेरॉय तालाश रहती थी शिशुपाल जी की एज ही वुड डू ऑट जॉब एट सूरिन जिम खाना और इंतजार रहता था शिव चरण जी का शिव चरण जी बोले तो मेल मैसेंजर हु वुड ब्रिंग एडमिशन लेटर्स स्कॉलरशिप लेटर्स अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर्स इंक्लूडिंग शादी के प्रपोजल लेटर्स द ब्रॉल बिटवीन हॉल टू एंड हॉल द ब्रॉल बिटवीन हॉल टू एंड हॉल थ्री हैड ऑलवेज बीन फेमस फॉर वेरियस रीजन बैटल ऑफ सुप्रीमसी वुड रेंज राइट फ्रॉम कंपीटिंग ज्यूरिंग द कल्चरल फेस्टिवल to sports to stealing of fuses to mass shouting from rooftop during blackouts to gali competitions it only reminds it only reminds me of a famous quote by atal bihari bajpayee ji kaurav kaun कौन पांडव टेढ़ा सवाल है दोनों और फैला शकुनी का कूट जाल है लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन दिस वाज एन ऑनर्ड बैच टू सी द फेमस पर्सनालिटीज लाइक सैम पेट्रोडा तलत अजीज भूपेंद्र मिताली एंड पिनाज मिसानी विजिट द कैंपस ड्यूरिंग दिस डे एन एनर्जेटिक बैच टू सी सुनील गवस्कर हिटिंग हिज 10000 टेस्ट रन एंड रवि शास्त्री बीइंग अवार्डेड ऑडी इन द वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप क्रिकेट a studious batch to still remember the electrifying lectures of professor r n biswas professor usha kumar professor rabindra singh and professor goel an explorative batch to go an explorative batch to go to lucknow for spic mackay and visit bombay lonavla goa for the industrial tour goa industrial tour still an unsolved mystery a protective batch a protective batch to protect their sick professors post indira gandhi assassination by being their guard a competitive batch who brought laurel to the institute by winning all india quiz competition a trendy batch to organize first ever fashion show in cultural fest which was named manic queen manic queen raised levels of adrenaline and attracted lot of crowd from city but invited trouble for our young chaps as administration raised their eyebrows in disapproval but our dynamic batch never gave up and managed the crisis efficient crisis efficiently by shifting nighttime drama into a daytime delight a compassionate batch who believed in giving vidya daan by volunteering for prayas and taught children from underprivileged section of society last but not least a blessed batch because those so 
चालीस लड़कों में एक ही लड़का काबिल निकला एज वन गर्ल चोज अ लाइफ पार्टनर हियर I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur. I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of the class of 1988, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here today to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Kholu. Popo. <laughs> Tapa. <laughs> Gunda. Lady Killer. Thatik Thatik Baba Lakhan just to name the few this is all i have from treasure of memories of class of 1988 this is all i have from treasure of memories of class of 98 88 i hope i got my facts right on this beautiful day let's start to remember to laugh share fond memories and make new memories that we can talk about in our next reunion we are so pleased today that we gathered here today in person something we cannot take it for granted anymore now ladies and gentlemen without taking any more of your precious time i would like to invite professor s ganesh director id kanpur to kindly address the gathering A warm welcome to the alumni and uh, very good morning to all of you uh, it's a wonderful day i'm sure uh, those who are living in the northern part of the country would have realized today is a very bright sunny day uh, especially for us uh, if you compare the last few weeks i think it's very very pleasant and uh, also today we are inaugurating the flower show in the nursery and maybe tomorrow if you are around if you go around the nursery it will be fantastic i would really urge all of you to have a walk around the nursery uh, that again probably would take back in your memory line so i'm ganesh i'm currently the officiating director of iri kanpur uh, i've been a faculty in the department of biological sciences and bioengineering since 2002 uh, close to 22 years here on campus I've been the head of the department, dean, research and development, deputy director, and currently holding the post of director until a regular um, director is appointed. So what I would do is uh, give uh, a small uh, overview or brief overview about the institute as to what uh, it is currently in terms of its academic research and other activities and uh, some immediate you know sort of goals that we have set in and we do have. Uh, a ten-year plan that is something that uh, we have put together. Uh, that's also presented to the board. Uh, that is something that we can share if someone, you know, any of you are interested in. But today I would sort of rather give an update on some of the major initiatives that we have taken and where we are in terms of our academic program, research, and outreach activities. Uh, you know, all of us know Hari Kanpur. Uh, it's known for the computing 
you know, uh, infrastructure as well as the training that we provide to the students, and that continues to be the tradition. And we do have now one of the supercomputers on campus that we call as uh, Param Sanghanak. So that's something that was established about four or five years, and we are continue to, you know, add more such facilities on campus. The other thing uh, I'm sure all of you would have appreciated is that the campus, uh, though there are many new buildings have come in, but it's only getting greener. I'm sure all would appreciate that the number of trees that we plant and grow within the campus has you know, gone up every year, and then it's getting only greener. In terms of the statistics, that's what it is. You know all of you, the area remains the same, but the faculty strength has grown uh, close to 600. We have UGPG students pretty much similar, like 4,000 is outdated. We have probably 4,300 plus students, PG students, and we may soon, this coming uh, July, August, we will be touching around four, you know, 10,000 students on campus. Uh, we have close to 200 postdocs, and uh, you know, extremely very, very proud about the alumni base that we have, 43,000 plus alumni that really make uh, you know, brought in the name of IIT Kanpur. Thank you, all of you, for joining us on this reunion, and uh, and also the family members who accompanied the alumni. That's great. Uh, that's a kind of an extended family for us, and uh, we we are extremely you know happy to host all of you. Just to give uh, an idea about the academic units, uh, you know, we do have, of course, in the engineering, science, humanities, but there are many new departments and initiatives that you can see. Uh, I mentioned about biological sciences and bioengineering. It's a whole department now, 22 years. But then in recent years, we have added a couple of more departments like sustainable energy engineering and a full-fledged department of design in engineering. And we, in science, we have added uh, earth science sometime back, uh, about 10 years back. And then we have cognitive science as a new department. And then we have a department called space, uh, space planetary astronomical sciences and engineering. Uh, in the humanities, we have a full-fledged economic science department. One of the, you know, they do offer a BS program uh, through the JE. is one of the very successful, you know, undergraduate program uh, of the institute, and it's it's a, again the department has grown really well. And of course, we continue to have the interdisciplinary program. One of them, the photonic science and engineering, may become a department soon because that's being worked out. <clears throat> uh, some of the new academic initiative, one is the e-master's program that, that we launched about two years back. This is an online, completely online program uh, for the upskilling of industry professionals. It's a, one could complete it in, in, a, in one year period, or they can face it the way would, they would like to do, uh, it maybe go up to four years, depending on their load and the time that is available. So these are some of the so close to about 14 programs, we'll be adding two more programs to that. It depends on the industry needs. Uh, these are tailored to the industry needs, and we do have faculty and also many uh, uh, professor of practice as well as visiting faculty from the industry who join us in offering some of these programs. And we already graduated one batch uh, uh, in the last year convocation. So we have close to about uh, 600 plus students already enrolled uh, in the current semester. So I, I would say that this is getting really a good, good, uh, you know, uh, reception amongst the working professional. Undergraduate, uh, you know, uh, as you all know, IIT Kanpur continue to, you know, evolve the academic program. Every 10 years, we bring in major restructuring, but every year there are a lot of minor restructuring happens. We do have minor double major and dual degree. Uh, we have brought in the credit system. Now a student can graduate even in at the end of uh, three years, because it is the how many credits you earn plus the core courses that you can graduate earlier. It's not like you have to be here for four years, and they can take overload and complete even double major, you know, major in two different disciplines, or they can go for a dual degree either in the parent department or any other department in the institute. Uh, we have also, uh, you know, introducing what is called as honors and interdepartmental degrees. So one of them is scheme program that is to encourage uh, social science, communication, humanities, economics, management. You know, it's a kind of a mixed basket, but that's something that uh, was sort of, you know, thought about as one of the options that they can, you know, students can consider. And we have introduced what is called as the exit program. So if someone is not really doing quite well in the in the 
you know, BTEC, BTEC degree program, they can exit with what you call as a BSc in applied sciences uh, with certain, you know, two, two and a half years credit, that's what you equivalent to that. Uh, and we also introduce what is called as, uh, you know, uh, for the credits for entrepreneurial activities, somebody is associated with a startup or went to the industry, learned something that you can consider as a credit so that, you know, the summer internship, either in the startup or in the industry, can be con you know considered towards the credit requirement. There is a cap on that. Likewise for the MOOCs, like you know you may have some online uh, you know uh, courses that you can credit uh, because some of the subjects you may be interested in, but we may not be offering that offers that kind of a flexibility. Uh, that is something that uh, we have introduced. Uh, faculty, if you really look at it, uh, you know you can see that over the years, in the last few years, the number of faculty. Uh, you know, as increased strength, uh, it is about 580. Uh, there are many who have retired as well. So the net uh, intake is what I'm showing, but in the last five years, four years, probably about 240 faculty members have joined. That's the higher that we have done. Uh, you know, uh, we can see here 301 offers made and 207 faculty members joined. And uh, just to assure you that the faculty profile has gone only better uh, with time. It's not like we are hiring just uh, you know anyone, and those we are offering, they are getting offered either in the top universities abroad or in the other old IIT or IIC. So that's the competition level, and of course, uh, you know, 60 plus uh, percentage is the success rate. The others either do not consider returning back to the country or they choose uh, some other IIT for their. Destination. So that's the uh, that's uh, a summary. And of course, you know, faculty have really contributed, and you can see that there are many recognitions that our faculty have received. Many of some of them you may already know. I would like to touch upon <clears throat> the last two, uh, the recent awards. Uh, this is the Infosys Prize uh, given to the faculty from within the country and outside for their outstanding contribution in one of the five different areas. Professor Sachidan Tripathi and Dr. Arun Shukla, they have been, uh, you know, awarded for engineering science and and in uh, life sciences. That's something that really talks about how good uh, you know, the faculty has been in terms of in research and innovation. Uh, this is again uh, <clears throat> the World Academy of Science Fellowship, again a recognition, international recognition for people who contribute extremely well in the science and engineering research. And Professor Avinash Agarwal from Mechanical Engineering Department has been, you know, selected for the award or the fellowship last year. And uh, there are a large number of awards just to uh, show some of this, which really talks about uh, how good the faculty have been in terms of uh, the research and development activities. Just I'll give a summary about the research and development ecosystem of the institute. Uh, so we do have the academic department, but what we also have is the research centers, the thematic research centers that we have established. Uh, these are a large facilities, but which has a specific mandate for mission mode projects. For example, we have a center for nanoscience. So obviously, there the, the research area is nanoscience and its application in variety of fields. And we have National Center for Flexible Electronics, again, one of its kind where you can do manufacturing as well as you know research. Uh, on you know flexible electronics, I'll touch upon some of these uh, uh, centers a little later, and we have Center for Cybersecurity, Center for uh, you know river management studies, and so on. And we also have the central research facilities that have high-end uh, equipments for research. It includes, for example, the wind tunnel facility, advanced Center for Material Science, and advanced imaging facility, and so on. is open for all the students and you know uh, the researchers in the institute and also outside people do come and use our facility these are the two new verticals that we have added and these are you know is you know uh, financially independent uh, entities but fully owned by id kanpur one is a techno park which is uh, a large research park uh, which has a facility to house the r d you know labs of the industry they come and set up their you know in uh, uh, r d labs here i'll talk about a bit a little later. And we have what is called as the incubator or the SIIC, which is again a section eight company that is for our uh, you know, startup uh, uh, facility. So this uh, is the, what you call as the NIR of 
ranking. This is one of the ranking that is done, carried out by the Ministry of Education. Uh, you know, in terms of in the innovation category, IIT Kanpur is ranked number one. In overall, we are fifth. In the engineering, we are fourth. That's the current ranking in terms of uh, you know the NIRF ranking. So there are some uh, highlights of the scientific you know innovation or product development, including, for example, the national blockchain for e-governance. Uh, you know the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the prime minister's grievance portal that the entire platform was developed by IIT Kanpur. I'll talk about uh, in the next slide. And we have many other uh, such innovation, including, for example, the impact-based sampler. This is, again, licensed to a company that they're producing. And recently, we licensed this touch-sensitive watch for blind and visually impaired. Again, it is licensed to a company they're going to manufacture soon. It will be in the market. And this air quality index that we see in the newspaper or in the TV channel, uh, that was sort of, you know, the standards are given by IIT Kanpur. This is a gazette notification. And we do have uh, IoT enabled uh, a device, which is you know linked to a mobile phone for soil testing. Again, this is licensed to a company. Uh, it is a kind of considered to be something a game changer for the farmers because it is extremely low in terms of uh, cost involved. <clears throat> and these are the other uh, you know uh, examples in different areas. But what I would like to sort of give a summary is that we have more than 1,000 patents and IPR filing. Um, more than 400 have been granted. Uh, currently, we sort of file about 100 plus in a year. And uh, what is uh, really satisfying is that our tech transfer rate is about 14%, uh, which is considered to be extremely good because if you look at the global average, it's about 6 to 7%. So that's something that we are extremely proud of. We would like to really you know, um, increase it, therefore, great majority of the IPRs and patterns that we sort of file that uh, gets the industry uh, uh, um, you know, consideration, therefore it can be <clears throat> tech transferred. Just to give a snapshot of the incubator, I would say the incubator that we have is, uh, uh, is one of the best in the country, if not the best. Uh, we have close to 170 companies that are on board, <clears throat> uh, incubated. Uh, you know, as many have graduated already. Uh, if you look at the cumulative turnover, it's about 86 crores, and we have raised a funding of about 380 crores, and more than 4,000 jobs have been created by the startups. And uh, of the 170 plus companies, 75 are women-led uh, enterprises. That's really uh, staggering, you know. And, and what is interesting here is that the, the companies that themselves patented close to 50 IPRs, you know, because these are all R&D, uh, that they have done in-house. We have facilities wherein they can carry out research, uh, dedicated labs for them, and also they can use any of the labs that is there and facilities in the campus. So that's that's the portfolio. So we have you know one plus crore revenue made. Uh, there are 16 portfolio companies, and some of these are listed here. And you add is one uh, company that's extremely successful in having these UAVs for many uh, uh, applications, including during drought or during, uh, you know, floods or in, in, in defense. So in fact, uh, Uttarakhand government has used it during the flood for delivering the medicine and food and so on. This is incubated by one of our faculty members from Aerospace uh, Engineering Department. The Off-Grid is another company uh, led by our students. And this has got recently huge, uh, you know, investment from multinational companies. This is, they are making a novel, uh, uh, you know, battery for, EV, you know, application charging. Uh, it uses, uh, it's not a lithium, it's a very different material that they have. That's that's the good thing about it. And of course, many of you would have heard about the company called Fool, which, you know, uses the temple waste, the flowers from the temple waste and convert them into multiple products. Uh, some of them like styrofoam. And one R&D is, is called as Fleather. Uh, they've used a kind of a, a fermentation method to develop a vegan leather, which is as good as the traditional leather, but then, of course, it derived from the temple waste. So this is something that, again, a company that we are looking at as one of those that will can become unicorn, a couple of them that I listed. So these are some of the recognitions that the startups from IIT Kanpur has received, uh, you know, whether it is uh, the highlighted in Forbes or any other, you know, such kind of recognition that you can see here.
So one uh, uh, highlight of uh, one of the startup company that called as Nocark is uh, is the development of the invasive ventilator. So I'm sure many of you are aware during the COVID, there was a huge demand for the ventilator, uh, and India was you know always importing ventilators that has become a big challenge. So in about ten months or eight months from the you know the drawing board to product delivery. It happened in house, and the Nocock company took up this challenge. When um, you know, with the help from the faculty, students, and many of the alumni who contributed, uh, they developed and marketed this product, uh, this ventilator that you see. We have more than 4,000 uh, installations in the country, and even there is a book that spoke about how this whole thing happened because it's very critical because during the lockdown to do something like this where you have a you know very very uh, difficult supply chain constraints to develop something in house with uh, the supply chain that is available within the country was the biggest challenge and they could do and now this uh, company is exporting uh, the ventilators abroad and uh, they also developed what is called as a, a pediatric ventilator that's a very unique product because normally what you have is an adult uh, you know ventilator but they also developed a pediatric ventilator for the kids that is something really, really, you know, uh, something that we need to be very happy about. <clears throat> so these are some of the R&D centers that I just listed. So I'll give you a little more uh, overview on them. One is the National Center, sorry, Center for Nanosciences. Uh, it has several, as you can see that, you know, nanoscience as a platform, it has several applications, right, from, you know, MEMS micro cantilever sensors for, you know, TB detection to many other, in fact, uh, you know the the mask that that many of you are aware of, Swasa mask, that has come from this company called Nino Eastpin. That that's an you know an offshoot of this particular center. Uh, again, that's one of the product that that you show. And we have this National Center for Flexible Electronics. Again, they have uh, you can see that they can print electronic circuit on a variety of substrates, including cloth and many other flexible substrate. That's the their uh, expertise. Again, there are large applications in defense and even in healthcare. Uh, some of them are again licensed to the companies. One is a wearable uh, 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 detection device for breast cancer. So that's again, uh, we have a facility for printing uh, prototype. So that's that's what uh, uh, is unique about this facility. So we have a center for cybersecurity. Again, one of the kind in the country and for any cyber sec security. Uh, related, uh, you know, uh, challenges. Uh, the government of India approaches our center. This is like a pretty much a think tank, think tank as well as also troubleshooter. Uh, it provides tools of protection of all the critical infrastructure. This for the the power grid, whether it's a stock exchange, whether it is for shipping yard. You know, this this center is really really you know involved in in giving advice as well as in protection. When if it is hacked, this is a center that really goes and blocks it and helps the government as well. So um, last year, uh, sometime in November, <coughs> we uh, inaugurated this particular facility, what you call as the Mehta's Family Center for Engineering and Medicine. This is a center uh, which uh, has a clear mandate of using engineering <coughs> principles to address some of the healthcare needs. So they have three verticals, as you can see, uh, regenerative medicine, molecular medicine and digital medicine. So there are flagship projects again, and it's mainly from the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering and other colleagues from you know, uh, chemical, chemistry, and mechanical, they are involved in this. And this is center was supported by the Matha Family Foundation, USA, and uh, the building and the facility was inaugurated last year. <clears throat> so uh, this is another uh, kind of a flagship project for the 5G testbed. Uh, as you know that uh, India has rolled out the 5G, uh, uh, you know, uh, backbone as well. So this, some of the facilities, some of the, uh, you know, uh, devices can be tested here. This is, a, this, is, this is, you know, really have uh, multiple applications. And this has been sort of, you know, commended by the Prime Minister in his speech. And in fact, one of the technology that is developed jointly between IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras, uh, this 5G RAN technology was licensed to Tejas Network, a Tata-owned uh, company, uh, that, that's going to be the backbone for the telecommunications in, in the country in years to come. Uh, 
Um, these are some snippets to show that the the uh, the prime minister also appreciated many of the uh, you know the, you know R and D from IIT Kanpur. So we have established a center for developing intelligence systems. So this mainly the center uses AI and ML applications for a variety of you know needs and uh, you know it is a unique hybrid academic center with translation focus. There is no degree program anything. They are mainly in providing the solutions. Uh, their number number of you know, projects that they have taken for the government and non-government agencies there. We also set up a center for excellence for unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, it's uh, again funded by two different sources. One, of course, the UP government, other also from the government of India, Ministry of Electronics and IT. Uh, so uh, we do have a excellent strength in UAV, uh, uh, and and in fact, we are also offering an MTEC program in unmanned aerial vehicles, or aerial systems, yeah. So this is uh, one such uh, outcome of many of the research uh, projects from IIT Kanpur. Uh, these, I'm sure many of you are aware of centralized public grievance, red cell, and monitoring system, what you call a CP grams portal, uh, monitored by the Prime Minister of India. So that's a, uh, you know, AI engine platform that is developed by IIT Kanpur, so it has a robust, uh, you know, uh, 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 algorithm which can use multiple languages, uh, which can flag off what is the grievance, not by the keyword, by the context of it, and it can sort it automatically to different sections. So the number of hits that you get in the CV gram, and it handles within 12 hours, uh, and then sort it out and make, you know, follow up also. This is something that really the government, especially the Home Ministry, has uh, really appreciated. Now they are going to implement in many other, you know, departments. And uh, IIT Kanpur received the national award for e-governance, silver award for this particular platform. And uh, you know, we are extremely uh, happy that uh, such, you know, developments are also acknowledged by the government. So we have set up what is called a DR DRDO, Defense Research Development Organization, Industry Academy or Center of Excellence. Uh, this is focused on uh, materials related research for specifically uh, defense application. And you can see that it is heavily funded by the Ministry of Defense. Um, it's close to 200 crore plus, And we have a number of verticals. You can see that printing on flexible electronic, advanced nanomaterials, and so on. Uh, uh, this would soon be functional. Professor uh, Kantesh Balani is here. So he's one of those uh, coordinators who, who take care of uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, I mentioned about the Techno Park, which is a research park facility. We have a huge building that would be inaugurated maybe in a month or so. Uh, that is mainly to house the R&D labs of the industry. This is one such example. So the Lawrence Lab is one of the leading pharma company. Uh, so what they are investing is close to 100 crores here in setting up uh, a manufacturing facility. Uh, this is mainly for uh, gene delivery application because we have one of our colleagues from the Department of Biological Science Bioengineering uh, developed a viral based gene delivery application. In fact, today we had a brainstorming meeting with uh, five different centers in the country for retinal diseases. So it's much easier for us to deliver the gene there. So therefore, people who are born with a gene, gene defect, now we can correct the gene defect by delivering the correct copy of the gene. Uh, it could be many of the <clears throat> muscle related problem. It could be retinal related problems that could be done. So that's what the facility is. And uh, the main uh, motive is to bring down the cost because currently if you go for a gene therapy, uh, which is extremely prohibitive for anyone from India. So this technology is going to revolutionize by bringing down the cost at the same time as effective, if not more than what you have from any other company from the US or the Europe mainly. Um, the other such initiative in the healthcare is the tripartite agreement with uh, the Carquinos Healthcare. This is a comp private company which is funded both by Reliance and uh, Tata Group, or Tata Trust rather. So we have uh, an agreement with them and the UP government, uh, mainly through the cancer uh, center, uh, Kanshi Ram Cancer Center in Lucknow. Uh, this is to really use the, the, the Carquinos is setting up a huge diagnostic lab in Lucknow. Uh, um, you know, the, the diagnosis, of course, throw up a lot of data in terms of your DNA, RNA, and protein, and so on. So our group from IIT Kanpur would be utilizing the data, analyzing them to come up with the signatures that could predispose someone for a cancer or any other ailment. 
uh, that is specific to the Uttar Pradesh because this, this is going to be a nodal uh, diagnostic facility for the entire state of Uttar Pradesh. So you're going to have a huge amount of data that you would be analyzing in partnership with the UP government. Um, the other initiative that we have done is uh, we signed an MOU with the Indian Institute of Skills. I'm sure some of you may be aware that uh, I, you know, government of India has set up three such institutes in the country. One in Ahmedabad, the other one is in Mumbai. The third one is in Kanpur. Uh, the Mumbai and Ahmedabad, you know, the, the schools are run by Tatas and Ambanis. And this is the only one institute that is given to a government entity like IIT Kanpur to run it. So we are going to run this institute for five years. Uh, in that process, we also would be setting up many lab facilities. Unlike the other two skilling centers, this institute is really going to look at a uh, very niche area, very advanced uh, deep tech uh, training, what we have shown in robotics and automation, advanced manufacturing, agriculture 4.0, advanced defense technology and healthcare. These are the uh, five verticals that we have identified. Uh, it's going to have diploma certificate program mainly for the working professionals or those who have done with their uh, graduation. So we have several companies already lined up for sponsoring their trainees. Uh, HAL is one of them. They are going to fund heavily here uh, because HAL also has a base in Kanpur. So that's uh, the already signed. Maybe in a couple of months, we'll be launching this program from Kanpur. So the other major initiative that we have started is the Kotak School of Sustainability. And this is again funded by Kotak Group. Uh, it's about 120 crores they have pledged for this school. And as you can see here, the School of Sustainability covers the engineering science, environment and ecology, society and economy. Uh, you know, it has a larger uh, mandate than a typical academic program. That's why you call it as a school. And, and, and uh, you know, the outreach activity as well. This again was launched uh, on 14th of November. Uh, the, the Minister of Education, you know, launched this. And we already have a department associated with that. There is a center associated with that. We'll be adding more departments and programs and, and, and other activities as part of the center. Um, this school, of course, uh, was possible. Uh, and many other such activities institutes possible because of uh, a generous support and contribution in many different ways by our alumni. And for example, the Quotex School also is kind of a brainchild in a way, in a seed uh, from uh, Mr. Sudhakar Keshavan. So he funded a center uh, called uh, Chandra Kanta Keshavan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solution. This is part of the school now. And he also played a major role in setting the mandate of the school and securing funding and many other collaborations. So that we are very, very you know, thankful to all of you. Many of you contributed in many different ways. The other such center is the Shivani Center. This is mainly uh, is to give what you call a soft landing for the students who enter our undergraduate program you know, after training, getting their training in vernacular languages. So that's something that you know, we are also developing textbook and others in different languages that they can understand. And then they can take off. You know, otherwise, it becomes a shock for them. And we are very, very grateful to Mr. Muktesh Pant, who sort of you know conceived the idea and also set up the center by giving funding. <clears throat> so there are other initiatives. For example, Dr. Ranjit Singh, Roji Siksha Kendra, again funded by Dr. Ranjit Singh from, and uh, you know this center really you know looks at the rural areas, empowering women or training the students or the teachers. Therefore, you know the education you know is, is one of the mandates in formal as well as informal. And we have the Jeet Bindra Unit Operations Lab, again, funded by Mr. Jagdeep Singh Bindra. Recently, we have set up what is called a Jaipulur Non-Invasive Brain Simulation Lab as part of the Cognitive Science Program, and also the Jaipulur Reading Room in the library. Again, this was generously supported by uh, the family of late uh, Mr. Jaipulur. Uh, <clears throat> that is a brief, and then uh, I'll talk about international relations in academics and research. Uh, so we have what you call as a joint degree program. So wherein the degree is jointly offered by IIT Kanpur and one of the partner universities. Uh, it is mainly now right now in PhD. We are going to open it soon for MTech, MS, and MBA. So that's something that we have already approved in the Senate. So we have it with uh, the one of the leading Chinese, uh, Taiwanese university called National Chiotang University. Uh, this is mainly in semiconductors and electronics. 
and we have with the uh, New York University, uh, the Tandon School, and we have with Latrobe University and Melbourne University, and we have with the NUS. There are, as you see, that there are 14 such programs. Uh, uh, these are all, uh, again, in niche areas. It's not that every area is open for every university. Therefore, there is not that we are competing against each other. And we have an academy with Latrobe University in certain areas, for example, smart, city, smart cities and health. Uh, it's, uh, we probably have close to about 90 to 100 such students who are having the joint PhD degree program. Many have graduated. In fact, one of them joined here back as a faculty as well. So we have other such engagements in terms of joint supervision, but degrees awarded only by IIT Kanpur. And there are other programs that support. And these are just to give you an idea as to you know what are the engagements, say they with Latrobe or Rice University and so on. <clears throat> Infrastructure, I'm sure those who have had the morning walk, you would have seen, or when you walk around the campus, you'll see that there are many, many new buildings that have come in um, uh, as compared to what it was when you were here as a student or when you visited uh, in other, any other capacity. So we have really you know, uh, expanded uh, because the number of students have increased, the faculty has increased, research areas multiplied, new departments. So there is a need and we have really you know, expanded the, the infrastructure. So right now we have what is called a Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. This is the largest building in the campus and we have added many new buildings, engineering science building one, two, three, and so on, and of course, uh, we have uh, apartments that also have come in. I can show you in the next slide, like for example, these are all uh, for the faculty um, and uh, hostels and some of them are facility. For example, this is a research complex uh, where we would be housing many of the center of excellence like DRDO cell and, and so on. This is techno park where the industry would set up their R&D lab, the Loras lab is setting up. In fact, they have taken one floor, complete one floor for setting up their facility. And we have this faculty building uh, annexe that is coming up and so on. <clears throat> there are many more projects that are lined up to take care of the future needs of the country. So we have set up what is called as uh, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation, IITK DF, a Section 8 company, which is mainly mandated to uh, take care of the alumni relations and as, as well as in the fundraising activities and, and we were men, you know many of you are already have interacted with the team uh, we have a fantastic board uh, also again thanks to the alumni uh, uh, dr bvr mohan reddy rajiv Rangan and rajiv sarup they are all <clears throat> alumni who have been a part of this board and really helped us you know making this entity as to what it is today and setting up the mandate and bring in more in professionalism. And we have Mr. Kapil Kauli as the CEO uh, of this uh, foundation. And this pretty much run through the office of Dean Research uh, Resources and Alumni. And many of you would be in touch with him for this reunion. And that's something that we brought in a change in regard to how we engage with alumni and also in our fundraising activities. This is just to show how our fundraising uh, has been in the, the recent past. Like you can see that uh, in the last five years, you know, last year, 20 to 23, we raised close to 120 crores. Um, these are money realized uh, uh, in, in, in the current financial year. So this is, I could also say that in the last financial year, the fund that we have raised is amongst the best among all the IITs in terms of the fundraising. So we are very, very thankful to all the alumni who have helped in many different ways. Some of the major donors, contributors are listed here. We would like to thank everyone for their uh, contribution, and not only in terms of funding, but even seeding the thought and setting the mandate and nurturing the goals and so on. So we have held uh, alumni engagement uh, when we visit uh, uh, the US uh, and Australia, Singapore, and so on. So these are some of the pictures that talks about the reunion that happened in the last one year. One is in Sydney, other one is in San Francisco, and so on. So these are reunions on campus. The year 22-23, um, you can see the number of reunions, and, and that's all because of the break after the COVID, we could kickstart this activity, and we're extremely happy to have all our alumni back on campus to interact with them 
and to provide an update on the institute and seek their advice, input, and their suggestions or contribution, whichever way they think that they could do. And so are you here. Uh, this year, uh, we have lined up you know, a number of reunion. You can see that uh, 50th reunion was the last one. And uh, I will just uh, conclude my brief summary by giving a brief about the major initiative that we have taken, which is the Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology. Again, a major initiative mainly driven by the alumni contribution. Uh, this school uh, is conceived to be a very different kind of a medical uh, school because uh, normally in India, the medical schools are standalone medical institutions or college, which is primarily to train the doctors for healthcare. But uh, you know, with, as you have seen in, in my presentation, IIT Kanpur has become an undergraduate institute transformed into a research innovation university. And as a result, in every department, divisions, there are a lot of emphasis on R&D and product development, translation research. And what we also found is that during COVID, that un, un, you know, the standalone medical colleges can really offer a good uh, healthcare, but really cannot flourish in innovation system because for the innovation, you need to have multidisciplinary you know, understanding and contribution. And that is exactly the reason why we would like to have a medical school on campus because that offers a kind of faculty who are in the medical school as well as in science and engineering who can come together and work and then we have a different ecosystem. So what we have done is that we have come up with a project wherein we have allotted 30 acres of the land for med school. This project is about 700 crore. Uh, this uh, part of it is a is a hospital, which is 500 bed hospital. And you can see that clinical discipline, there are about eight of them that we are considering in the first phase. Uh, this super speciality hospital is named after one of our alumni, Kedupati Singhania, um, from Kanpur. And uh, the JK Cement Group has pledged a lot of you know, funding for this particular initiative. And then we have uh, eight or nine centers of excellence in futuristic you know, R&D, uh, you can see that there are centers called telemedicine, robotics, EA in healthcare, cardiovascular and pulmonary research. These are each one of the centers and these are all identified by looking at the need as well as the expertise that we have on campus. We have uh, close to about 80 faculty members from across the you know, institute are associated with this medical school. I just give you uh, an idea is that uh, each center has a flagship pro you know, project or mission mode project to develop a tool or uh, a, a mecha you know a, a device uh, and and then which would have a great societal impact uh, just to give you an idea uh, this is the greenfield land that is allotted for the gangwal school of medical science this is the shivli gate here back side of the campus um, uh, some of you may find time to visit this place we already have the construction has begun for this uh, we are extremely grateful again to as i said the alumni uh, we have Mr. Rakesh Gangwal, uh, co-founder of the Indigo Airlines. He's uh, one of, he's the principal donor for this med school. That's why this med school is named after him as Gangwal School. And we have founders, four of them really contributed, not just in funding, but really helping us with the vision and mandate and, 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 and in many different ways. And of course, we have league founders and so on. So that's really in, you know, in, in, in very, very interesting model uh, which we would like to replicate for many other such future schools that we may come up with. One of the flagship projects I will touch upon here, this is uh, coming from the uh, Center of Excellence of Cardiovascular Research. Uh, this is called as, um, what do you call it, as a artificial heart, right? Uh, the chief mentor for this project is uh, Dr. Devi Shetty. In fact, he has written an article about this particular uh, you know, project, uh, you know, proposed uh, the center and their uh, mandate. Uh, the idea is that, you know, if you really look at uh, uh, India, like it's, it's, uh, the estimated is about some 17 to 20,000 kids die out of, because of the heart failure. Uh, they could be saved if you can put with, uh, you know, implant an LVAD device or what you call as artificial heart device. But the biggest challenge is the cost of such device. It's, it's close to about one and a half crores each device cost. So the, you know, we took up this challenge to develop a device which is as good or, you know, better than the one that exists in the market, but, you know, offer it 
under 20 lakhs. You know, that's the sole idea. And extremely, you know, happy to say that we have a prototype that is doing exceedingly well. So we may soon go for the animal trial. Uh, everything goes well. In about one year, we'll be entering into the clinical trial. So with the mandate that we should give a product which is as good, but cost is less than 20 lakhs. So that we pretty much on that track. So there are various ways, um, you know, you all could contribute. There are some opportunities in small, big way uh, beyond, uh, you know, even funding. There are other opportunities as well, uh, which we'll talk about. Uh, this med school also has a residence for the PG doctors uh, because we'll be offering a post MD program. Uh, the DM and MCH and the, the doctors who stay here, this is funded by Rural uh, Electric Corporation, uh, CSR funding, so it's a 90 studio apartment for the you know, doctors coming up. And then we have done the Bhumi Pujan and this is the construction activities done by the LNT. Uh, our Tata TCE is our uh, PMC for this project. As you can see that the, you know, we already have bidding coming up. In terms of you know academic research, we are in touch with University of Melbourne. The the idea is if you really look at an Indian scenario, uh, the medical education is a strictly regimental process. You know, for example, IITs we can come up with a kind of a curriculum without really getting into any of the regulatory approvals, and that's one of the reasons why IITs have been successful because we can really look at and tailor it to the need of the society um, or the demand. But uh, medical education is structured such that even if it's given as to what course, when you have to offer, and what's the credit, and so on. Uh, even if we have to start a medical program here, which would be very different, uh, it, 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 I'm sure that you would have a lot of uh, um, challenge and resistance from the current uh, the regulatory body in the medical education. So what we are thinking is to have uh, uh, physicians who are trained in engineering and science. For example, you enter into IIT, have a BTEC, the same kind of courses and spend two, three more years to get an MD. Therefore, you would have uh, engineering, science, humanities, and medicine. You know, then you are going to have be a very different breed of clinicians who can take up challenging problems that would have an engineering application. So that's the something that we are in discussion with the University of Melbourne. They have a pathway program. So our idea is that um, you know we'll have a program here. They will go to University of Melbourne for two more years and earn an MD. This is in discussion, and of course we have many other. Uh, MOUs exchange with other universities for research and so on. The goal, just I'll talk about, this is just the next couple of years, although I've said 2025, which is not far away, is to increase the faculty strength to 650 because this is extremely important. Uh, you know, if you really want to be in the forefront of research, it's not only uh, what you do, but, you know, the impact and, uh, you know, the, um, in terms of IPR and translations, even the strength matters, otherwise you will not be recognized. And complete the expansion of the academic infrastructure, many of the projects we already taken up. And we also need residential accommodation for both students and faculty and staff. And of course, we have these two schools that we have to see that it's up and running because the Gangwal School, the hospital, you know, is accepted to be completed by uh, September, October next year. So, and then of course, you think of horizontal growth, uh, new schools, for example, School of Entrepreneurship is something that we are discussing. School of Data Science is something that we are discussing. School of AI and uh, you know application we are thinking. So there are some proposals already in line. And of course, the challenge has been funding for the infrastructure uh, because the ministry, you know, uh, in the last five years, have reduced the funding. They no longer give grant to the institute for its uh, infrastructure growth. They give pretty much give money for taking care of your salary, fellowship, and the pensions, uh, that's it. Uh, the rest we have to earn ourselves. From our earning, we have to fund you know, the, the program. The way they do is to give us a loan for you know, any of the amount that you are asking, subject to we showing a roadmap that we can repay with our earning. So in a way, what it does is that we are repaying in about 10 years, like just the way any of us will take a home loan. Uh, that's how we do for any of the new building that you have seen. So we have taken a loan of 600 crores already, and another 400 crores we have applied has been sanctioned 
So in a year, we have expected to repay about 100 crores from our earnings. So uh, one, we don't have funding from the ministry. Second, our earnings go back in the, uh, in the, the loan repayment. So therefore, there is a challenge. That's why you know, one of the reasons that we have put in this Section 8 company, IITK DF, is also to, to raise funding. Therefore, we can be competitive and, 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 and be a global leader. Uh, that's that's the challenge and that's an opportunity as well so resource generation variety of things whether it's infrastructure whether it is scholarships awards travel grants again uh, faculty you know with the uh, 23 iits many icers and many other uh, even private university which pay pretty well nowadays you know we are going to really have a tough competition for hiring faculty so we have to give them good uh, higher seed grant and fellowship to attract the best mind here Therefore, there's a funding that requirements, and then there are many other, you know, involvements. You know, I really reach out to all of you. Uh, you know, if you are uh, willing, and uh, you know, there are opportunities. We could consider many of you as a visiting faculty. You could come, stay for a week or two, interact with students, offer courses, and then also we have what is called the professor of practice. Uh, uh, this is for those experts in the industry to become, you know, professors here, adjunct faculty. There are many ways, including, for example, you know, participating in the ranking surveys in, in terms of employer reputation, academic reputation. I'm sure all of you are aware of how good the institute has been. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, rank it fairly in compared to any other institute in the country and abroad. So that would really bring in a lot more visibility and involvement. And that's a kind of a brief summary. I'll be very, very happy to take any inputs or feedback from you. Thank you again. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. You know, commonly within India, IITs have been traditionally known more for their undergraduate program. So it's good that and heartening to see that the focus is shifting more towards research. But this leads me to two questions. One is, you know, when we look at the intake in the UG system, we still see that it is an excruciating grind for students to get into the IIT system, which is being increasingly questioned as to whether it is good for student health or for initiative. Or are we really getting the best kind of UG students who are truly interested in their fields? That's one. And the second is, how are we making our PhD programs more attractive so that the IITs become known more for their PhD programs and many of the students who would still prefer to go, say, to the US or, or Canada or some other place for the PhD would opt to stay in India? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I will take the second question first. Uh, uh, there is a notion that under let me finish, I'll come back to you, right, yeah. That this undergraduate student after graduation, they go abroad. It is less than 10%. Nowadays, if you really look at it, less than 10% go abroad. Our unknown undergraduates enter into your master's program and PhD program, about 250 to 300 students every batch get into our own program, okay? Uh, if you really look at the other IITs, that second, third generation IITs, where are the faculty coming from? The older IITs provide the faculty for them. So therefore, it's a, it, the PhD program has picked up in the last, say, I would say, 15 years. Uh, that's the major uh, channel for the faculty in most of the engineering institutes of the country. In that way, you know, we are really happy that we have done exceedingly well. And to address your question, how good they are, they're exceedingly good. Uh, so we have more than one way of uh, really uh, screening them uh, because we can do a gate or jr of based entry and then we can have a group discussion interview very subjective you know kind of a selection we can do uh, that offers that flexibility that we don't have in undergraduate program i'll come to that why uh, uh, the in between is the master's programs you know you have a phd program that people come and we have what is called as uh, to, uh, to address your question that can we really attract good students 
to come into the PhD program in IIT. So we have what is called as Prime Minister's Research Fellowship, right? It's about 75 to 80,000 rupees per month. Uh, so every IIT gets about 100, 150 students, you know, like, uh, you know, like 50, 60 fellowships. So it's very competitive. Other than the fellowship that we offer, which is about 38,000 or so, this is a very competitive fellowship. Therefore, and this is open to, for example, all the students who graduate from IITs, you know, they can get into that. So that these are avenues that we can offer to them, and we do get good students. The masters is a mixed bag because the masters are not those who are interested in research; uh, they are interested in jobs. So they have done BTEC somewhere and would like to upskill themselves. Therefore, they are relevant to the job industry. Uh, that's the uh, in between. But if you look at undergraduates, uh, in terms of where do they go after the graduation, I come to how do they enter, what is the challenge there. Uh, if you really see that, I say, say like, you know, 70% uh, of them go to industry jobs within the country, right? It's about 10, 15% who go abroad, either for higher studies or whatever it is. So that's the thing, and a large section of these students enter into the startups as well. Uh, that is again very, very uh, uh, heartening to note because we also enabled what is called as deferred placement. If someone uh, after graduation interested in trying out in a startup, what we support them is a monthly fellowship for them to take up that you know startup activity, stay there for two years if they want. And at the end of two years, if they feel that is not taking off, they can come back and seek for placement and get placed. In fact, these students who go for a, this kind of a placement and come back, they are better placed than the fresh students, as you know that they have more exposure than other students. So in that way, we encourage many such activities. But the biggest challenge, as you're saying, is the entry, right? Uh, the, the challenge is because there's a central portal, uh, all 23 IITs, and of course, uh, triple IITs, NITs, we have the two levels of, you know, uh, screening one is the main, the other one is advanced, uh, all objective type is, uh, you know, that's, that's what makes it challenging, you know, uh, because it's all objective type because we cannot go to descriptive. The moment you go to descriptive type, uh, uh, you know, evaluation that was there, you know, sometime back, if you get in there, you're going to have a huge challenge in terms of, because, you know, the aspirations of the students, aspirations of the parents have increase tremendously. The pressure that you are talking about is not because of IIT. It is because of the family. It's not IIT. We are not putting any pressure on any of the students who are in class 9, 10, 11, 12, right? We don't. It's the family that is putting pressure on them. Right? So it's, it, it has to happen at that level. And as a result, uh, they get into this coaching and everything. And unfortunately, we have to get into this multiple choice, uh, objective type thing, because then you know that this is the answer. Therefore, you get uh, uh, a score which cannot be challenged by the court. The moment you get into descriptive, which may be you know, better in terms of identifying a better you know, candidate, uh, but that would become exceedingly difficult because you know, there are, say, 10 different uh, faculties correcting papers. There will be a difference in terms of what you mark. Even 0.25 you know, marks would make a huge difference in the area that will be questioned. So it's practically very, very difficult for us to do. So that's where it is, yeah. This, this would continue until we come up with, or the government choose to do away with this common entrance test. Leave it to the individual IITs to go on their own and so on. So if that happens, yes, but this is something which is politically very, very sensitive. So the government would never give up the undergraduate you know, admission process. So. Thank you, Professor. But we do hope that a solution is found at some sure. stage. Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I have an observation in terms of the basic character of the buildings that is being changed, sir. IIT Kanpur had a basic character, but now what, are, what we are observing is that all kind of uh, material are being used as a facade, which is changing the basic character of the IIT Kanpur. So that is my observation, sir. Like, uh, can you give an example? Yeah. I mean, as I said, that all kind of materials are being used as a facade. Yeah, I I do agree. Uh, the the construction technology is changing. You have to get a what is it, graha rating, a star rating, and many other things. And at the same time, you have to keep 
your construction cost low. So how do you really you know, arrive at a possible way of doing? But one thing we are uh, very, very uh, 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 careful about is the, the, uh, the, uh, the building, how they look. I can see that you know, the brick color is something, a common theme. Majority of the building, if not most, would have this uh, pattern that is sort of you know, consistent model for most of the building, including the med school that I have shown you the graphic that would have that has a kind of a, you know, architectural element, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, So, uh, hello. So, uh, I agree with the fact that, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree with the fact that, um, it's it's not the same architecture which was done by Kanvinde originally, and it's really bad architecture right now. What's happening? I'm telling you, it, that's my opinion. It's a personal opinion because architecture is basically subjective. Uh, it's right. not an objective thing. Yeah. Secondly, what I would say is what I heard was like, you have taken 600 crores loan, you are taking 400 more for construction and making buildings. And you are talking about cheap construction. I would say that with my 35 years experience in India, we spend at least 10 to 15 percent more on because of bad design and bad construction. Mm -hmm. So, is the institute interested in saving that five to 10 percent minimum through value engineering, plus giving a better structural safety yeah. in? by after reducing the cost because that's a major cost for you sure, yeah. mm -hmm. so if you out of 1000 crores if you are able to save 10 percent that is 100 crore rupees uh, just to give you the convince model of architecture is not a model that we can sustain now because if you look at if you have to air condition the faculty building it would be a disaster because every wall is exposed right so therefore you know as you evolve you know, there has to be a change. That's that's something that I fully agree with you, that we have to really look at the structural aspect as well as the architectural design aspect to make it more energy efficient and make it much better in terms of safety at the same time keep the cost low. And that's what we are moved into. So if I, if I really talk about this large project that I'm talking about, whether it is the Gangwal School project or for the Kotak Mahendra School that is coming up building, you're all hiring people who are like TCE or you know relevant companies that really help us in this kind of a construction. So it's it's really you know that's where we are moving towards. But there could be small projects you know that would have some kind of a help that could. And if you could help us, we'll be extremely happy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all these buildings are on Indo-China border, starting from North Ladakh, right from DBO, just uh, Dalat Beg, Uldi, 32 buildings there, and then uh, all the top peaks of Himachal and uh, uh, basically Uttarakhand. And what we did was we did a renewable, hybrid renewable of uh, wind. Of course, wind wouldn't have a great potential here. Wind, solar, and geothermal. And these are all net zero kind of buildings because there's no energy available there. So there are a lot of possibilities. The problem with TC and kind of people is they don't, re they will talk about everything. But, uh, and probably uh, solar anyway, I don't think uh, you need their expertise on that. You no, probably are sure. much better on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know uh, because vertical, geothermal and all those things are also feasible. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, if you really look at uh, the campus in terms of, I think close to 15 to 20 percent of the you know energy we generate through our solar it's yeah. huge and, installation. And see, that. from the passive cooling perspective, yeah. you can actually make much better buildings. So what we did there uh, in most of these buildings was uh, we use lot of insulation because there's lot of insulation available. I got it, but the, uh, yeah, we, I'll I'll discuss yeah, this. We'll talk you. Step. Yeah, yeah, right, right. There are. There are challenges in Congo, you know, I'll tell you, in terms of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, since we are talking about buildings, so what Nishit and Pankaj said, that's obviously very hi-fi, but from my pers 
uh, from my perspective, the first thing when I entered into the new building was this massive stench of coming from the two bathrooms. I, you know, it's like mind boggling that we are spending 600 crores or a few hundred crores. Why can't you do something about it? Sure, yeah, we'll look at it, yeah. Sorry? For the students, you mean? So, uh, let me give you an idea about it. So, we have, right now, our uh, seating capacity is about 7,000. That's what the hostel. We are constructing three more hostels, which would add another 2,500 rooms, okay? But, but then you please understand, the number of seats, number of programs that we do, you know, for example, government will announce today that you have to have 30%, you know, reservation for the girl students, and then say we'll give you a grant in two years. So the hostel is going to come two years from now, right? But we are, nobody can say that we will not accept students, right? But we have to have that model and, and to, you know, you know, therefore it takes time, you know, for you to get a grant and construct the hostel. So that, that goes hand in hand. But as I said, our target is about 12,000 uh, rooms that would be available in about one and a half years to two years. Yep. Yeah. That would take care of the needs. Yeah. Hey guys, can we can we raise our hands, please? Yeah, yeah, please stand. Yeah. Actually, one interesting thing which I wanted to share today. Uh, yesterday in the dinner, uh, during the dinner, there was a juice corner where uh, a small girl, not small, a teenager, uh, <clears throat> was talking to me in fluent English, but she was dressed as a bearer. So um, I asked, uh, hearing her uh, English, I asked her, are you a student? Uh, she said yes, and uh, then we streamed. She said hotel management. So I didn't find your hotel management in your presentation. That's why I'm asking: Is hotel management also a, a stream that yeah. is being taught? Yeah, she may be a student of a institute of hotel management, but she works here. Yeah. It's not. We don't offer any program. Okay, and there are many trainees. And, and doctor, uh, actually, when we were uh, students. Uh, we did not have life sciences and biological sciences in the IITs. Mm -hmm. uh, so after its uh, uh, in incorporation in the uh, curriculum, uh, do you have any? Uh, 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 will uh, actually uh, will a student get BTEC degree after passing out from IIT? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are two different aspects. One is, of course, we offer bio life 101 to all the undergraduate students, regardless of the stream that they enter. And we have a BTEC program in biological sciences and bioengineering. It's an additional program, right, which they can major. Yeah, that's also there. And we have minor programs in tissue engineering, uh, which other students from other stream can take. So there are a variety of models they can, you know, come in there. Thank you so much. Sir, so I noticed that alumni, excuse me, yeah. Uh, I noticed. Back so, so, sir, I noticed that in your list of people, in the list of people who made contributions, they were certainly very distinguished folks, but almost all the contributions were monetary contributions. So, could you talk about what are the, some of the ways, not just in Dhan, but Tanman, that we as alumni can contribute to the institute. Sure. Uh, I, have, uh, I have one example here, uh, Mr. Gautam Khanna. Uh, he's, <laughs> you know, for his contribution to the institute in terms of how the med school would come up, what should be the hospital, and so on. You know, we were honored to honor him with the distinguished alumnus of our college. And I would sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the number of hours that he spent for us is enormous. The, the number of visits that he took to visit us and look at every design, every aspect of the med school, 
I'm extremely thankful to him for it. And I would request him to sort of, you know, give uh, uh, a kind of brief on how some of you can really contribute. It's not monetary, but it's out of this fit also. <laughs> The, the biggest thing you can do to a uh, alum is to make them speak in front of the batchmates. So, I this is a disaster. I say, Marna and Marna. No, but just two minutes. Anji? There is uh, negative marking, so if you do that. But I have to say this uh, I've been involved with the institute when this idea was conceived. I'm going to take two minutes. I'm going to say before we start. Yeah. When Dr. Karandikar took over, and we met him in Bombay, some of us met him in Bombay, and he mentioned about this, and I thought to myself, Ki kuch bhi. means means new director, new visioner is not going to happen. Then I told him, I said, we'll see. And I, you know, how we say some things. He said, okay, if you need help, call. How did I know that he will call? <laughs> so he called. So anyway, so that idea we. Uh, we, and the team has worked, so including the design, including the consultant. And what I believe is, I am here not because mujhe aata hai, but it is because I am the only person in the intersection of IIT and hospital. So, majburi, there is only one person. So, I've, I've, I've looked at the designs and various aspects, and I think it's going to come up uh, beautifully. And the team has been working. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh. If I say more, then it's Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, so, just one very short uh, comment on, see, whenever we'll go to these hostels, we'll obviously, as students, we feel very bad of the living conditions for the students now. So, new infra will come, but what is possible to do very quickly is probably do a new uh, national competition uh, award kind of a thing for smart furniture for the existing rooms, how they can be made ergonomically possible. And uh, because in architecture, this award thing is a big thing. Right, right. So for just a small award, yeah, you yeah. can get very smart ideas. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, so I know you talked about IPRs, that there's so many being filed and so many being translated. Could you also comment on how many international patents are being filed and, and converted to technology transfer? Many. Uh, one, one I can, it's not in 100, probably it's about 80 plus 90 international patents that we have. Uh, some of them have been transferred to Pfizer, for example, one of the cancer drug uh, that was you know, transferred to Pfizer, a big pharma company. There are, there are companies. Like, for example, even I'm talking about uh, the EV uh, battery thing. That's, that's also a multinational Israeli company is taken over. Yeah. There are many, yeah. There are. When I had the privilege of being here, then uh, this was an undergrad college predominantly an undergrad college, that was the character of the school. And we were known for two things, the difficulty of getting in and the ease of success after getting out. Yeah. So, and the ranking was based upon how difficult it was to get in. So in my time, the top rankers used to come to Kanpur. And of course, the best of jobs were also, and, and career opportunities were also at Kanpur. But now that you're morphing into a center of excellence, if somebody asks me that the college that you graduated from, what are the two, three things that they are leading in globally, then what would you say? Because I see a lot of work happening. But at the same time, I do see that maybe the focus is not so much on certain, certain particular aspects. Maybe if we were known for that we are the best in AI in India or maybe in Asia, or something like that. So if I were to ask, if somebody asks me that today, your alma mater, what are two, three, eight, two, three areas where, where, where we see a lot of promise mm -hmm. and future, both from the faculty, both from the research, both, 
from the IP that is, you know, being generated and the alumni, what would we, what, what should I say? Sure. Yeah. See, um, how do you identify as to what is the strength of a given institute, right? This is, you can do it by looking at the recognition that people get for their work or the funding that they receive. When I say funding, because nobody gives money for free. You know, you give funding because you expect that something would come up and you're going to bet the winning horse, right? That's what it is. So that, that's where you have to look at it. So if you really look at it the, in terms of, you know, for example, funding that we have got for many of the large COEs that I talk about, defense, UAV, or cybersecurity, this is the institute. When if you talk about cybersecurity, blockchain, this is the institute in the country. Any problem anywhere in national infrastructure, you know, there are right from the mobile phone, right? Any new model that is introduced in the country that is tested here, right? So the home ministry is, I mean, I can't reveal many of the different things that we do, right? And in UAV, for example, unmanned aerial vehicle, this is the best institute in the country, right? Because not only that we have a fantastic flight lab and everything, the control systems, and then your cybersecurity again comes in because it's all communication, right? And communication is, so you have a fantastic, that's why the, the government also funded, and you and the UP government has funded in that because it's going to be a huge explosion of growth in UAV technology in the country. Again, this funding has come here. Even med school, why would any of the alumni would fund crores here? Just because you're alumni, you're not going to just give money. Again, you're going to see because it's your earning, right? And that's the strength. When you talk about med tech, this is the best. If you talk about which is the department in the country that is number one in bioengineering, this is the department. This is the institute, right? And I'm talking about even recognition when you talk about Infosys and so on. This is, you know, globally you compete. And I can talk about there are many other such, you know, competitive fellowship that I'm talking about where the funding comes from. You have to internationally, you have to compete. There are many here. So there are niche areas that we do well. But you know, it's not a college, it's a university, right? So you may be you know, good in certain things, but you also want to bring in something that is a niche area that is extremely important for other departments to do well. So why should we you know, forget about humanities and social science? Is it not important? It's equally important. You're looking at to graduate that into your school where you can liberal arts school where even you can offer a bachelor's program. We are going to come up with even master's programs there too. Design you know, is another thing we have started here. So fine arts we have because that's extremely important element when it comes to design as such, right? Because it's a, so I mean, this is an evolving field and it also depends on how the, the environment change, you know, what are the needs? Like for example, we master, who thought about it? in 2019, online program. Nobody would have thought about COVID change. You can do education online. And that has really, you know, so it, it's it's evolving thing. And if you really look, talk about ranking, so there are many departments in the top 100 in the in the world, if you even take a US ranking, right? And I mean, you can ask, it's only top 100, why not top 450? The way the rank is very different. You ask for international faculty, you ask for international students. You're not going to get in JE okay, subsidized no, education no, no, no. where you pay some pittance, you get an education for the international students. It's not going to happen because this is completely funded by the government. It's not going to happen. So the ranking would remain low because you're not going to perform that well. You're not going to have 40%, 50% international students. You're not going to have 40%, 50% international faculty, right? You're not going to have it. So therefore, that would not really make a huge difference unless you change the ranking philosophy. Ranking philosophy is can in any of the top leading institutes in the you know number one, number five, whatever it is, any from rural India can straight away get into the undergraduate program even if they struggle in English? No, but you can do it here, right? I mean, and, and all these economically backward and all these reservations, other things, you know, you can talk about, but all these are uplifting. You're making a huge difference in the society. Who gives weightage for that? Nobody, right? So that, yeah. Hi. Um, 
Many Japanese companies would like to offer internship opportunities for students. Um, it, it would be great if you could uh, um, tell me who I, who I should contact. Sure, uh, that would be fantastic. We have uh, uh, our, you know, uh, Kapil and uh, you know, Dean Source is the contact person, but then we have a separate placement office also, but you know, right now they would be able to connect you with the relevant people, yeah. Okay. And we have uh, several such program in Japan. Uh, uh, for example, last year, 40 students from here also went to Japan, Tokyo University Institute of Tokyo, and then likewise we have a uh, student visiting ID Kanpur as well. So we have a fantastic, uh, uh, you know, cooperation with, with Japan. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Satya. Thank you, sir. I would now request Professor Kantesh Palani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly address the gathering. Yes, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to campus. It's very heartening to welcome you for your 35th year of reunion at IIT Kanpur. Again, we express a very sincere gratitude for your continued patronage, support, contributions. Many of them are monetary, many of them are also non-monetary. Your time, your experience, it also counts a lot. And you have supported multiple such initiatives for students, faculty, community welfare, even 9888 class fund, and multi supporting multiple activities, including scholarships, fellowships, faculty chairs, even for COVID relief fund and multiple others. Really express a sincere gratitude for the same. Recently, we celebrated 64th Foundation Day, and we could honor four institute fellows and 12 distinguished alumnus awardee. And also, we have a distinguished service awardee, Gautam Khannaji, right here and also two young alumnus awardees and two Satyendra K. Dubey Memorial Awardee. So really nice of that to see that. And typically that is preceded by a cultural fest called Antarang. That has become a norm. It started from last, last to last year. So this is our second episode of this program. And we are now very active in terms of alumni engagement. You might be getting multiple more number of emails now. So we have some program called Alma Connect, where we allow initiating certain connections. And I'll talk about that. And we also have multiple reunions. So there were flurry of reunions after COVID because we were also trying to make up. So last year, there were 15 reunions. And this year, nine reunions are actually planned. So this is the sixth one. Three more are, two more are, I think, are expected. After this is the seventh one. And multiple such initiatives are taken by the batches, like 1965 batch, PBCC, Khadim Divan building, outreach building, and also for faculty lounge. And recently, now we are coming up with a 1970 gym upgradation and expansion plan, which is going uh, ahead. These are the reunions for this particular year. So this is the seventh one, and we have two more yet to come. And this is the image fresh from the oven. So today morning, you could see that we had a badminton uh, event today morning. So it's nice to see people. Something about IIT Converge. So it's an initiative to encourage some somewhat engagement between the donors and the recipient. Because many times when donor gives, they would like to see what has happened. And we have started connecting them. And really, let me see, it is very, I think, uh, heartening to see. You know, when I see these conversations, it is really, you know, I get very emotional. And many times I have ears, uh, uh, tears in my eyes because uh, that's how grateful they feel about the donor. And they also want to give back. So that's a connection we have initiated. We also have uh, to engage the oncoming batch. So we have also started interacting with the incoming batch because tomorrow they will become re uh, they will become alumni. So that also way we have recently initiated this particular interaction. We also have mentorship programs and we have started slowly, but slowly we will also reach you to give your time as well as your tutelage. You can talk about you know how to live life, what courses to take, and so on in a mentorship program. So currently, we have 75 alumni, and we will reach you slowly. But we are, I think, going uh, steadily on this. This Alma Connect, that also is a platform to let us benefit from your experience to tell, again, students and also professional to get the professional knowledge back to students how to 
go ahead either maybe it's incubating a company or going ahead in life the multiple challenges which was also highlighted that currently now we have to take a loan whenever we want to construct something and we have new departments which have come up so there are multiple aspirational needs I have to visit conferences students also need to you know uh, explore a little bit more in terms of tweaking the hands you know and uh, tweaking something about engineering and all so that will be require good support also very good financial support and again because of a payment obligations the money which was coming in for us to give it to students faculty which is no more available by repaying the loan so we again request you to come back and maybe support in whatever possible way you can and there are multiple opportunities available for either supporting infrastructure or helping with the welfare research student scholarship faculty scholarships and many other things and as rightly rightly said your time is also very important you're also at a very nice i think you have a very good vantage of being at a position which is you know, filled full of so much of experience so please also connect us if you think you can point us in the right direction for either csr funding or engaging with multiple firms or any other particular area where you think you can actually help us please you know we are more than welcome to take your support you know and hold hold hands and you know, take it further together uh, again the system has become much more transparent now so you will see that there was some uh, sort of ironing also in terms of whatever money is coming in it is now available on a single platform which will allow you to access what the progress had, has been what is the money spent so each and every rupee is counted so each rupee what you donate is actually accounted for and we have now worked through everything in you know in in this particular process is available to at at your single click of you know button so that is again very important part which is developed as a project management system in terms of infrastructure yes there were there are multiple such initiatives which are supported also you can see the squash court also by class of 1988 so there is again a multi, one of the contributions by class of 98 1988 thanks a lot for that Gangwal school is i think also one of the very important projects of uh, iit kanpur and there are multiple avenues available to again help us lead us in multiple aspects and also gautam khanna ji also already has been very much actively involved but we are very good i think support team also available in terms of taking research and it will make a global impact uh, in terms of the funding opportunities again we have either specialty hospital beds uh, either beds or spe super specialty wards available academic research programs housing blocks there are multiple centers of excellence so which your where you can come in and support us in terms of student housing that is the main pain area for it kanpur as someone already pointed out that we have currently seating of around 7200 to 7500 whereas student strength is around 93 9500 and though multiple halls are being planned they will come i think in a period of 2 years or so that that will cater to 2000 students more but that is again a very pain area and we are really looking for So taking it, uh, making it. I think so. Hall 14 may come up very soon with a capacity of 750, and other halls will come sometime sooner, one and half to two years. In terms of other initiatives, there are multiple new departments which have come up, and again, that's where we again uh, the needs of the department also are aspirational. So again, we seek uh, your time, your involvement, and also your linkages which are available to support these particular departments to go ahead with cutting edge, you know, technology and research, and also. building student about student initiatives uh, there are multiple such opportunities available in terms of scholarships financial aids merit awards travel grants student development programs recreational programs recently we have started something called as a sahyog financial aid program because many students once they get this offer they find it very difficult to even pay the caution money or even to travel so initial settlement also uh, settling down also becomes very i think troublesome for them in terms of money and there are multiple others even in terms of what scholarships they have they really value it a lot so those things also are available in case someone wants to come forward and you know take up that particular cause for attracting good faculty also we require multiple you know such uh, again support in terms of enticing young faculty to join also supporting new faculty to you know come come here and young faculty to keep continue continuing a good research faculty chairs also recognize their excellence in some sense so there are multiple such things available and the numbers are still very less so we again seek uh, your support in that direction and again i mentioned earlier that you if you have any connects either in industry or any firm where you can help us with you know connecting a right problem or right faculty member for either corporate social responsibility or even taking some research project it will be really appreciated so we have mr rajat who will be able to connect us uh, out there so rajat ji is right sitting right there 
There are also avenues available for planned gift. It means if you want to leave something in your will, either as a stock or a cash or a retirement, that also can be worked out. So if you have anything in mind, please you know, let us know because all the donations will also be uh, completely uh, tax-free. So you'll get tax benefit out of that as well, either in India or as well as in US. So these are also, I think, uh, deductions which are available for any tax you give it to IIT Kanpur. We also do not shy away from recognizing our donors. So we have a wide list of uh, donors who are also recognized through Kritagya magazine. And this will again come up. The, this is the last version, and we have a new version which will come up soon for the same. And again, this is uh, the team. Uh, so I think I, I keep getting good vibes that you are feeling very well, very welcome. And this is all possible because of a very good team what we have. A pool of 35 people. So these are the people who are behind the scene, but they really make it work. We have team from Development Foundation in Dora, around 35 people. And at the last, I would thank really the batch coordinators, Nishit Ji and Shikha Ji. Typically, I leave with a few lines for the batch. So I have written a few lines for the batch. And I was really pleased to see such, you know, such uh, amicable, you know, and such uh, hospitable and um, uh, camaraderie among uh, all of you. <laughs> yes. Dosti kaha lavzo ki mahotaj hoti hai. Dosti kaha lavzo ki mahotaj hoti hai. Jab bhi mil jaye kashish be karar hoti hai. Chahe na mile barso. Chahe na mile barso. Salo bhi chup rahe. Milte hi bas. आंखों से ये गहराई इजहार होती है ये गहराई इजहार होती है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर नाउ लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेल मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सेगमेंट ऑफ द सेरेमनी व्हिच इंक्लूड्स द फेलिसिटेशन ऑफ अ डिस्टिंग्विश्ड अलुमनाय The Distinguished Alumnus Award is the highest award given by IIT Kanpur to its alumni in recogni recognition of their outstanding achievements. It's a pleasure to felicitate past DA awardees of the class of 1988 for their outstanding contribution. I would request Professor S. Ganesh to kindly come up on stage and felicitate. Requesting Mr. Subrata Mitra, DA resident of the Nepalese State, kindly come up on stage. Ms. Vartika Shukla, DA recipient of the year 2021, kindly come up on stage. I would like to congratulate all the recipients uh, of the award and taking this opportunity to express my gratitude on behalf of the Institute for their continued support and patronage. Requesting Mr. Gautam Khanna to kindly uh, stay back on stage to award batch awardees. Um, I will request Mr. Gautam Khanna to speak. We have two surprise awards and one award which uh, who was saying yesterday we have to still choose in the 50th reunion with the Nikamma of the batch. That is not here. <laughs> Nikamma of the batch will be in the 50th reunion. So, so this award is... <laughs> People who will survive. <laughs> so 
So, so that award we are not giving now. So we are giving this award and requesting Dr. Ganesh to uh, give us so on behalf of the batch to a person who is a friend of everyone, helpful to everyone, excellent organizer, knowledgeable, and of course he has an opinion on uh, lots of things. And and I have to read out a uh, li little bit about his contribution. We also know him as uh, the holder of Nishipedia. So thank you, very big thank you to Nishit Mohan for your untiring effort. In holding us together in a timeless bond. For the next 50 years, we are reunion. You are the guy. Thank you. And we you better take it. So guys, one more, one more, one more award. Mr. Bharga, one more award. So one more award to a person was quite pleasant but very firm in getting things done we have seen the commitment in the last few months excellent skills of uh, what we thought but we came to know it was hr it etc but we also saw skills in dancing yesterday <laughs> so managed to reach the uh, batchmates who didn't even exist in the horizon if she's got that data our dearest shikha <laughs> So she is, she's the she's the curator of the album and turned our memories into similar to TV value. Thank you, Sita. Thank you to all the audience, to the recipients of all the awards. Now I request, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we have come to an end of the ceremony, I would now request Mr. Kapil Kaur, CEO of ITK Development Foundation, to kindly come and get us. I tried dancing yesterday, but speech may not be good at. Uh, okay, so uh, I, on behalf of uh, the uh, album team, uh, am here to launch the AV. And uh, it was a contribution by uh, Anurag, Gautam, Himanshu Chakravarti, uh, Prakash Mohan, Manasvi, Preeti, Samini, SK Jenny. Sorry, SK Jenny. And uh, not only these, but uh, each one here, I, I'm sure nudged somebody or the other to send the inputs. And uh, yesterday, Rishi uh, called it labor of love. And actually, it's been a labor of love because we collected then, now, pictures and pictures of families, kids, some have grandkids, and uh, also write up. And uh, while we were compiling it, it took us, you know, we kind of traversed the journey along with you all. So it's uh, indeed a labor of love. Um, was it easy? Uh, we had challenges. <laughs> challenges because um, many of uh, you had your kids, you know, studying somewhere else and waited for Diwali or New Year or Christmas to come back and click those pictures. Uh, some spouses, some kids were very camera shy. So in some pictures, you will find them missing also. Uh, but one big challenge, which was quite, uh, you know, 
uh, common was that people were very shy, very humble to give their write-ups. They did not want to talk about their achievements. And that was very common to all of us here. And then I thought that this is what IITians are all about. You know, they are so grounded. Uh, the same Hawaii Chappal, Jola, Cycle people do not want to talk about their achievements. So I have plugged some places, the awards and uh, reward recognitions that I found, but uh, in many they are missing. So very, very humble uh, write-ups are there. Uh, so this is a 15-minute uh, AV that we'll play. And uh, post that, we'll be sending out a PDF, and it is password protected. For privacy concerns, there's a lot of personal information in this album. Uh, so we would like you not to forward it. It's a password protected, though. And uh, also, as I play the AV, we'll start with uh, remembering our four batchmates who we lost. So please do maintain uh, silence for that too.
Thank you, ma'am, for seeing such an engaging video, such a beautiful collection of photographs, and all the hard work that went. Uh, now I would request uh, Mr. Kapil Kaur, I CEO ITK Development Foundation, to kindly come and deliver a word of thanks. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nishi, you want to? I just wanted a minute. Yeah. No, no, this is not about anything. This is just about follow-up action that anyway is on my task list and you people will follow up later on it. And I thought everybody is here, so let me just finish it in one minute. Uh, so, uh, Professor Balani, you, as you saw that we have a, a Jayesh as one of our, and we have a, I don't know if you're aware, but we have Jayesh Memorial, Memorial Scholarship. So we would also like to start uh, for the three other batchmates, uh, the same, format, merit come means scholarships, 
two of these batchmates are from mechanical engineering, Rajiv and uh, P.K. Roy, and Ramesh Raman is from chemical engineering. So if we can, I mean, as quickly, because the funds are available in the batch fund, so there's nothing to be done. So, I mean, if these guys go back, that we've been able to do it, and I think it'll mean something for the families. So that is it. Then there is another thing, uh, which is that since you mentioned, uh, so there is another one that we had a uh, interaction with couple. Uh, we had him present. He was kind enough to take some time where whatever he'll present now, uh, but let's not preempt it. Oh, you're not presenting. Okay. So the other one, which uh, basically, so one is, of course, we understand that people come from extremely poor backgrounds and Whenever at the JE time, we hear these stories because media uh, peps it up. And we definitely want to do something as a batch. We, we are not able to find the contact details because those details would be with the JE uh, counseling team. And we every year, when we ever hear, we try to talk to them, but we have never been able to do. So the other, uh, say the one that you have fund, that is another thing where we would like to do how we are able to do as a format so that institutionally people know that this is available because IT can administer it better. We can't, right? But funding we can make sure. And the third thing is that Prakash is actually, uh, so we you mentioned mentorship. So Prakash is interested in having uh, basically sponsor a student, not only sponsor, so it's a actually tan in man dhan tino. Matlab, he will, Jesse hi bacha yaha aaye, he is willing to fund the entire thing, entire education, living experience. Is that right, Prakash? Ha to aajo. Yeh tumi bata do na, tumara kya idea hai? I mean, we rather have you. I may miss communicate. No, actually, this is a follow-up of the call which we had, in which you suggested that the people who are really below the poverty line. So my uh, suggestion or my proposal is that uh, one child I would like to adopt for, throughout the journey. So that starting from the first year until the child graduates and whatever support is required, I'll be uh, very happy to do so. Mentor in my capacity, yes, we are, means uh, whatever I can do that. Yeah, so this is my proposal. And if other other batchmates also come forward, then it will be very nice. Okay, thank you. The idea of doing this is that uh, if we can set up a good, uh, see, ideas, this is just an idea. But since you are the educators, the way you would like to structure it, because we, it should be a replicable model. Okay. If Because, see, one of the things that we find is that we don't have the best talent or students coming to ITK. So what we are thinking is if this funding, if ITK has a lot of funding from a student, a lot of students may just come because of that. And they may be as bright as anybody else. So rather than IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, if ITK can build uh, in terms of a large corpus of uh, scholarships, uh, that could work. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so let me, before I get into the business of thanking all of you, uh, I was made a request while I was entering this room that uh, I need to make an ask, which I usually don't. So, so suggestion that I got, each one of you should be contributing $25,000 on this reunion to the Institute Fund. So I am making that ask on behalf of your batch. Uh, and you've been here for long, and I would not uh, want to keep it that way, because it's, uh, it's almost lunchtime. Uh, so I'd begin by thanking uh, uh, Professor Ganesh, uh, our director, for giving a very detailed presentation on the, how the Institute has made progress in the last few years. Uh, Professor Balani for how we've been engaging with alumni and uh, how you could contribute to various initiatives, for Institute initiatives. Uh, most importantly, uh, thanking all of you and your families for coming back in 
large numbers and being so engaged. So that means a lot to us uh, in terms of your uh, batch leaders, Nishit and Shikha for, for taking the efforts, collecting, making the yearbook. It's, it's just phenomenal. It takes a lot of effort. We know that. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank my team uh, uh, at both ITK DF and DORA for ensuring, uh, for bringing you all back to campus and making all the arrangements and uh, ensuring that you are having a good time here. Uh, you just come in yesterday. You still have two more days to go. So I hope you have a good time. And anything that we can do from our end to make your stay better here and uh, We'd be happy to do that. Please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. I think we'll assemble for the batch photograph outside now. Thank you, everyone. I request everyone to please proceed for batch photograph outside.